Hey, hey, we're back. We're back here on the sunny corner of Glenwood and Lunt, and now we are very honored to have, once again, one of the most skilled observers of politics in our cities, county, and state, the one, the only, the incomparable, David Orr. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. <laughs> Always good to be here in the heartland. Right on. <laughs> so I really wanted to talk the to you, David. The way 49 goes is the way the mayor's race I goes. I agree. That's right. <laughs> the um, tax increment financing has been uh, one of these mysteries behind the scenes of how government gets funded or how special projects get funded out of uh, the fifth floor of City Hall. You've been tracking this in your role as county clerk and trying to illuminate for the public this sort of hidden tax. And this week, uh, Greg Hines of Cranes took a little different tack uh, and feels that um, folks who've been criticizing the TIP program um, are wrong, that they are misusing some of the basic uh, terminology and understanding about how TIPs work. Our chronicler of TIFs for the last 10 years, Ben Jarafsky of the Chicago Reader, shot back. The comment lines on both websites are full of responses. I thought we'd bring you on to try to illuminate a bit more uh, beyond what you've already done in the past. What's this kerfuffle okay. about? Okay, let's start by trying to make it more interesting. Okay, the reason you know, this is like important, that. tax increment financing, because it's $6 billion coming out of Chicago's property taxes over the last 30 years. Six billion dollars, okay. It's also critical to understanding what's really going on in this election and the differences. One candidate continues to abuse it and use it to help his friends over and over and over again. The other candidate, Chewy Garcia, will reform the TIF process. The reason that's important is we all know we don't have much money. That's all we hear about, we don't have much money. Well, if you're getting the six billion, and, all, and each year you're getting about 425 new dollars, 425 million new dollars coming from the property taxpayers into this so-called TIF fund, that's why it's critical we use it. Number one, anybody that says there's not a money, uh, the money is all properly planned. Number one, total BS, okay? The last four years under Rom and Daly, They've returned $452 million from the TIF fund because they got so desperate. You're not returning, you're not taking money, $452 million, out of this fund if everything is, oh, a great plan, and we got 23 years, and everything's great. Number one, BS. Secondly, BS, um, <laughs> Mr. Hines, you know, and again, no offense to Greg, he's an old buddy, but it seemed like the, the mayor's office wrote He lost the, a lot of friends recently. Well, he, you know, I mean, it's Crane's Magazine. You gotta understand that. And this is exactly what the mayor's people are saying over and over again, because I know what they say, because we try and suggest they go a different direction. Um, Greg actually suggested, oh, all this stuff about this money would go to the schools is just BS. He said, even if everything was closed down, there wouldn't be any money. Flat out wrong. If all, if all of it was closed down today, the schools alone would get $222 million, because Greg, either doesn't realize or didn't report the recovered TIF value that t t taxing districts can avail themselves of under something called PTEL, complicated P-T-E-L-L, -L, um, would allow them to, to raise $220 million. Okay, now if you want to go into detail, fine. But so the bottom line is he's just wrong about that. But the main thing he's wrong about is these, these funds have been misused. Now, you can argue they were more misused under Daly than Rahm, okay? Uh, but what Rahm has done, being politically astute, if not politically honest, has tried to steer a lot of it to infrastructure to say, oh, well, we're not abusing it. And still, the problem, the problem is this 400 and some, you know, it used to be 500 million a year, now it's about 425 million a year, not much of it is going to the neighborhoods except for maybe fixing the L or something else. Okay, it's supposed to spur economic development. Okay, so, and if you go even further, which nobody does, our local aldermen in, in total defense of this ripoff program that Rom runs with pride, um, the real question is, who gets all these contracts? When hundreds, and I mean, I'm serious, hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars have been spent on Michigan Avenue, State Street, Wacker Drive by the river by Trump Tower. Now, I didn't know that that's a terribly blighted area. 
Really? <laughs> I thought, okay. Meanwhile, the neighborhoods, that is why Chuy Garcia is going to win. That is why there's stuff out there that the Tribune editorial board and the Sun-Times editorial board are totally scared about. The Tribune editorial board, after the last debate, said the debate was over. The debate, by the way, was six to seven. The Tribune editorial board said, well, the debate was over at 6.15, implying that as soon as Chuy opened his mouth, he was so bad the debate was over. Now the Tribune lied about that too, because in their minds the debate was over before it started. The Tribune wants to anoint Rom. These articles every day, ironically except for John Cass, <laughs> the old curmudgeon John's from, the, great. from the southeast <laughs> side. But um, so the bottom line is they, I'll give you a few examples of how biased this press is and don't be fooled by it. When Chewy says we need to go to Springfield and we need to have a progressive income tax. Oh, no, no, that'll take too long. When Rom says we know to get it, go to Springfield and broaden the sales tax, good idea, Rom. When Chewy says we got to reform the TIF program and use some of that money to help with the pensions or pay for the police that he's going to put. Oh, no, 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 that, there's not enough money there. When Rom the other night said part of his three-point plan is to take some money out of the TIFs, oh, that's a great idea. Okay, it's just constant BS. The main thing that you, well, for, first of all, the main thing is if you take any particular issue, Rom has failed, okay? And just like the Tea Party blaming all the failures of the country on the president when they cause it, this, our Tea Party here, Rom and his millions of dollars from out of town, is trying to convince people, even though I've messed up everything, me, Rom, we can't trust this other guy. Every, he made three promises four years ago. He's going to reform our finances, he's going to, uh, deal significantly with crime, and he's going to dramatically improve our schools. Boom. Finances under him are a mess. Three strikes. Now, he blames everything on Daly, but here's the other hypocritical thing about this man. He keeps referring to the failed policies of the past. What is that? Everybody should know Rom didn't come out of the reform movement like Chewy Garcia. Rom has been part of the old machine from the second he walked here. How did he get elected state rep? Okay, because paid workers, some of them have gone to jail, had to work for him, and he beat a good person in Nancy Kazak. Then he ran for Congress. These people would stop at my door, and they'd say, we hate the guy, but we got to work or we'll lose our jobs. He comes from that. So the nerve to try and blame all of it on daily while pretending he came out of some place, some reform school, you know, outside of Chicago. So, TIFs. I want to... I wanna... Go ahead. Drill down here a little bit because a hundred million there, a billion there, our listeners' are, eyes are already glazing over. Isn't the essential problem with TIFs is that there's no accountability for how that money collected out of our property tax is actually going to be spent, right. other than kind of the mayor's slush fund? There's very little accountability. We tried to work with the mayor. I gave him a lot of room. You might, some of you were shocked how I was. Uh, pleasant toward Rom the first couple years, okay? Because he promised he was going to make some of these reforms. We work with him. We gave him ideas, and then he belittled these ideas. We gave him constructive ideas about how you could save money and therefore help the other taxing bodies. No, there, there, are, there are some audits, but like these other performance audits they talk about, they, don't, they give their side. They don't tell the whole thing. Furthermore, it's, um, yes, aldermen have to be involved, okay? But when most of the money Okay, hundreds of hundreds of, in other words, a great percentage of the 425 million each year is going into what I call the downtown area. Uh, there's only a couple of aldermen involved in that, and it's, so it's, uh, it's 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 unrealistic to suggest that anybody really knows. We suggested, why don't you, if you're serious about transparency, when you discuss the budget, the one time a year, when aldermen can ask all these questions, do have the TIF money, the 420 some million every year, have it discussed at the same time. They refused. Um, there is some transparency. There's a little bit of information. I have hired the best experts. My staff has the most talented people with TIFs in the entire state. I've hired interns. Press has worked at it. They cannot get to where you want to get to understanding how all this money is spent. They haven't even touched, well, who's getting the contracts and all that kind of thing. So, yes, uh, TIFs is not an answer to everything, okay? And Chewy Garcia is not saying that. But I guarantee you in a Chewy Garcia administration, we're not going to be spending all this money for all these fat cats and, and spending literally hundreds of millions of dollars to help downtown industry. We want to help them. But in, in this administration, we have to have share the pain and gain. 
Rahm's administration has not sharing the gain, that goes to the few, and the pain goes to the many. David Schiff's is a good example of it. David, let me ask you a little bit about these audits. Uh, one of the things I, I heard recently, I think that was sometime this morning, is uh, that uh, Eddie Burke, who... Uh, audits the, uh, when, when Chewy says, um, you know, we can't trust these books, which everybody else who knows that says you can't trust the books, right. and then they pull a stunt and say, well, we got all these audits. Yeah, but they, then he got, they got uh, found out that these really weren't real audits. Well, the, pro the problem is, is that first of all, these are audits um, that they provide. If you talk to any of the progressive aldermen, Scott Wagaspak, who's probably the most knowledgeable in the city council, um, and he has consistently said they don't give us the real dollars. Now the irony is that Joe Fergus, the inspector general, I don't know if Rahm is trying to say, but the inspector general has consistently attacked Rahm on the misadventures. Okay, so the Inspector General has constantly said, no, the books are not correct. He just blasted them last week for uh, millions of dollars in, in ways that they promised to correct, which they never did. Well, I was going to go with uh, secret hidden money. We've got Ed Burke, who controls uh, the workers in his finance committee, uh, controls the worker comp information, and that is like hidden. And uh, my understanding exactly. and what I've heard is that there's many millions of dollars there that is unaccounted for and could be used in some form or fashion. Okay. I honestly believe, and it's hard to prove, I honestly believe there are hundreds of millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars that a good administration could redirect because Rom is no reformer. Pay to play costs money. Okay, workman's comp is one example. Okay, one of the ways in which you, you waste the taxpayer money is if you've been injured and you're ready to go back to work, and let's say it's uh, two weeks later, you're ready to go back to work. But if it takes you, instead of another week to get back to work, it takes you three or four months because they've added all these layers, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money that's lost labor. Also, we're paying all these groups, okay? So workman's comp is a real problem. You ask any of the experts, and I do believe that's something to be significantly reformed, but it's not just workman's comp. It's much more than that. It's, they have not cracked down, because Rom does not make the hard decisions. I guarantee you, Chewy is tough. Chewy is, I mean, people are coming to Chewy all the time now because they think he's gonna win. He is not saying, oh great, come on, I'll give you what you want. No, he is really tough. Rom is switching on every policy. Yeah. He switched on the red light cameras. He lied about the safety. And then the Tribune blasts him about the, the, the yellow lights. So he takes a few cameras down and hopes that the public will be fooled. Okay, I could go on and on. You name any issue. Housing, like I said, he's built very little housing while he's been mayor. But what's happened? The CHA is sitting on tens of millions of dollars while hundreds of thousands of people, Verified. seniors, yeah, seniors and, and uh, large families can't get housing in Chicago. Uh, it, 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 it shows perfectly what Chewy's point is. This is a mayor for the few. He's diverted our resources for the few. He's failed financially, but he's hoping to convince everybody, well, I messed up. This Chewy guy can't govern. This so, Chewy guy can govern. This Chewy guy is the one that Tony Preckwinkle picked. You know, uh, Rom picked Ed Burke, okay? Or, or Pat O'Connor to be the floor leader. Tony picked Chewy. So you're out this week with a statement that essentially says that Chewy's budget plan has enough specifics for you, even though the specific thing is what Rom keeps claiming now. The Tribune is coming out this weekend with their re-endorsement of Rom for mayor. The Sun-Times um, did, too. And the Sun-Times did. Carol Marine has a very interesting column where she's basically suggesting that Chewy needs to step up. Um, let's, he's let's, right. let's, she says let's he's say, right. Well, yeah, the point is, I, I wouldn't be here if I didn't believe Chewy is right. But you've got to understand, and I'm going to separate the Tribune and the sometimes editorial board from reporters. The right. Tribunes and sometimes editorial board will do anything to defeat Chewy. That's why I gave you those examples. They're part of the we'll 2%. Do anything to protect what they see as this continuing downtown investment and pay to play. Okay. Um, yes, but remember, what I'm telling you is Chewy has said some of these things. That's why I mentioned before, the implication, yeah, Chewy can, he's going to offer more, okay? And that's why I met with the BG yesterday and pointed out about these books, okay? But that's, that's why I gave these examples of the dishonest coverage. Like I say, when Chewy talks about TIF reform, oh, BS, BS. When Rom discussed it at the last debate, oh, that's wonderful. So it's, it's not just that the ideas haven't been f come forward. Um, one of the things that Chewy announced last week that the, the, new, the, the editorial boards 
totally panned. He brought in some experts. He knows, he looked around the world, and there are places where, um, because of financial problem in urban areas, that people are doing good things. So one of the things he suggests is a totally different way of looking at our problem financially. They didn't really cover it. Obviously, we can get some money just out of the city budget, like I said. He said, now look at all of the major budgets controlled by the mayor. So it's not just a city budget. The city, the schools, the park district, community colleges. That's 17.6. Chicago Housing Authority. But those, those are not even talking about those. There's others. But the four main that the, the mayor controls, $17.6 billion in property taxes. Do you believe... We all know that's what drives me nuts about the reporters. They've been covering the scams and the ripoffs and the fraud in these agencies for four years. So when Chewy says, I'm going to broaden the way we look at it, does anyone believe that we couldn't combine some things in these four units? We couldn't have efficiencies in the way we procure money and all sorts of things? Of course we can. It's just the politics of really the politics of ROM and the old machine, if you want to put that way. They're the ones blocking that. And the, the reporters didn't even uh, talk about that. There's places around the world where this is being used successfully. We, we know we're not going to quite go to regional government, but we know we have to work together with our regions, our local mayors, and other taxing bodies because there isn't enough money. Now, if you do what Rom does and screw the pensioners, okay, and, and screw workers, one f a final point. I'm an ally in uh, the State House with Browner. One more good example of the difference and the total hypocrisy of this mayor. He brags about the minimum wage. He only went with the minimum wage after the progressive push forward, and even then, he agreed reluctantly on $13 an hour. Doesn't take effect till 2019. That $13 an hour, okay? But while Rahm has been mayor, what has happened? Rahm has con could have controlled something. Under Rahm, janitors went from $15 an hour to $11.30. Now, anybody that knows anything about Economy 101 is that when you pay people too little, every, every, every penny that someone would get that's making $11.30 up to $15 would be spent in the economy. They're not saving the dollars like his friend Ken Griffin. Okay, they're not saving those pennies. And so, see, that's what Rom did in the real world. He cut the, the most vulnerable janitor's pay, and then he claims this big thing about minimum wage that hasn't even taken effect yet. We'll be back next Saturday morning with more Live from the Heartland here on the <laughs> stage at the Heartland Cafe. We want to thank all the people who made this show possible, all our wonderful guests today. We encourage you to do good in the world. Early voting starts on the 23rd, Monday, and it runs through... Saturday. April 4th. Right. So get out and vote, and you all have a great work. Do good in the world. Great week. Do good in the world. The world needs all that you're good. All, all power, power to the people. people. Over and out.